Hi, I'm Martin and this is Scott and uh, we were in Playing Aloud in Lincoln. Um, we've been here for about three years or so already. We took over from some other guys who were here for about five years beforehand. And uh, yeah, we make music for our life basically and help other people play music as well. So when we took over, um, I think the place, like, it just needed some finishing touches, didn't it? I think there's, um, you know, a few bits like a carpet in the corridor or like a, a ceiling yeah. in the corridor. It just didn't feel like a studio, did it? It, it felt like a warehouse with some warehouse with some rooms, 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 yeah. yeah. What we wanted to do was, um, obviously, we've been going nearly three years now, just over time, as we've had the money coming in, we've been, you know, doing another studio. This used to be just white plasterboard walls and they went right up to the roof. Um, and we've just been trying to pour a bit of money into it, yeah. just upgrading things as we go. I mean, as, as you say, it didn't feel like a kind of comfortable place, especially this, the, you know, the control room here. Um, like I said, a corridor was, was cold. I remember the first day, I mean, we took over, what, late, late February, early March, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And uh, as soon as, you know, we got the keys and we sat down at the desk, it was like, <sighs> what have we done? Breathe <laughs> <Free> the steam. <laughs> yeah. I'm the guitar tutor, Scott's a drum tutor, and generally guitarist and drummer, which makes a big difference. Uh, I'd sit up here in the dark room um, making music all day and that, <laughs> till the early hours. Uh, Scott does all the uh, general handyman bits, don't you? <laughs> Which I'm terrible Solder at. cables and uh, repair things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I've made a little collection here. But I don't know. Yeah, we've yeah. got four, four soundproof rooms that are full pretty much every night of the week. Um, yeah. which is how we like it. <laughs> Probably average 35, 40 bands a week, I think, come down and use the space for a couple of hours, three hours. I mean, some people come down for six hour sessions. I don't know how they do that. <laughs> <laughs> We definitely get an eclectic range of, of musicians coming down, don't we? Um, I mean, quite a lot of covers bands. Probably about 50-50 between covers and originals, I think, isn't it? Yeah, down here. probably more originals now. It used to be a fair more covers mm. bands, didn't there? But as with cover bands, you don't really need to rehearse your set that often, so they go out and gig every week and that's no rehearsal. <laughs> as for like age ranges, we get people from like 16 up to... You know, 70, 75, I think we have some people coming down, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, students as well, you know, I've, I've got like an eight-year-old student, I've got a 60-year-old you know, mm. student, that's it. Yeah, so it's, it, we, we definitely got a good variety. Um, Friday nights I always find quite interesting here because we, we generally it's, uh, we get a lot of young metal bands and mm. occasionally you get like a jazz band in the closest room. So you've just got this slight murmuring sound of, you know, metal and jazz. And it's, yeah, interesting. <laughs> mm. But yeah, I mean, styles wise, yeah, we get a bit of everything. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I would be lying if we said rock wasn't the kind of. Yeah, I think rock's a staple, thing. isn't it? But I think that's generally it's quite a popular genre for people to play, isn't it? I mean, in the charts, there's a fair bit of rock. Of it's pop, a cool but... one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, we get we have a few Motown bands that come down, very good Motown bands that come down that get like yeah. nine people in one of those rooms. They're pretty big rooms. One of the nine people in there with horn sections and keep massive keyboards and everything. Oh, when I was in my old Pink Floyd tribute band with what they never said there, that was ridiculous. I'm stuck in a corner playing bass like that. Mm. It was quite fun. Um, but yeah, it's got a lot of variety. Mm -hmm. um, so it keeps us uh, entertained, to say the least. <laughs> I personally been coming here for quite a few years on and off and always found the service very good and the facilities very good and a very friendly atmosphere so it's all good. Very very friendly yes uh, nothing's too much trouble for us uh, you know they'll come get us a ramp let us know what the school is and we've got dodgy mics or change them and uh, so it's, it's really, really good service and really enjoy it here 
this just seems a nice central place for us to come to to, to uh, practice and rehearse. Um, my name is Isla and my band is called Isla and the Rainflowers. <laughs> We come to Playing Aloud because it's got loads of equipment, um, there's an easier environment and they've got teachers there if you need any help and it's just a lot easier than being at home on your own. We've got quite a bit of tuition going on. Um, I worked as a guitar tutor before uh, we started here, um, so I kind of, you know, had a bit of a standing on that. Um, and Scott started teaching drums as well, which uh, I think you were slightly nervous about to start with, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, well, I've never, never done any teaching before or anything, so yeah. But, yeah, it's great. With our tuition, uh, we generally speaking just cater to the needs of the students. Um, we, we, we get, I've seen it before, you get quite a lot of people going to lessons and they strictly do this and you know that's not really what everyone wants to do. Obviously we've got to have a certain uh, boundary there, of, you can't just have people learning One Direction songs every week otherwise we'll go insane as well. <laughs> But um, yeah, we do quite a lot of stuff for uh, for leisure. We get people who want to play their favourite rock songs. Um, we get people who want to learn, you know, really intense classical pieces or something. Um, and we get people who want to do the grades. Uh, this centre is actually um, a rock school exam centre, um, which is one of the biggest kind of um, grading boards um, in the world, actually, isn't it? Which yeah. I didn't realise until a while ago. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's occasional days where we'll come down here. Uh, the dreaded time of like eight in the morning. So it's, just, it's early for us, you know. We work till eleven p.m. So our working day is generally a bit behind everyone else's, a bit. <laughs> um, so yeah, we 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 have. Um, it's I think it's the only place in Lincoln which does the rock school exam. So they mm -hmm. all come here, you know, um, use our rooms. Obviously, we've got you know big soundproof rooms and that we can hide people in, so the parents don't stand outside the doors and you know listen. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's quite an interesting experience. Again, we we meet lots of people like that. We can, um, well, potential customers as well. Isn't yeah, we've generated business out of it before, taking on students from people coming down here for their exams. And yeah, just like I had people say, oh, you, you teach here or you do PA high here or, you know, you've got rehearsal rooms. We're looking for, because obviously the children's parents are quite often musicians themselves. So it's good that people find out about the place, even through that. Happy bits. <laughs> But yeah, generally it's, it's quite useful having one of us as a drummer and one of us as a guitarist because I think we're, well, well, we're a lot better than we used to be but when I didn't yeah. even know how to put a hi-hat clamp on. <laughs> yeah, when well, someone comes to me with a guitar for a setup, it's like, there you go mate. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I mean, uh, again, the people pride ourselves and it's a general ability to sort out our customers. We do quite a lot of repairs and stuff, uh, whether it's, you know, installing kick ports or reskinning drum kits, tuning them, or, you know, setting up guitars, um, as I say, repairing broken headstocks, um, which my wife does, I don't do that. <laughs> yeah. We know our limits now, don't we, what we can and can't do, hmm. which is quite useful. <laughs> It would be nice, in a sense, to be able to have a massive chunk of money and say, right, we're going to do this, this, this and this. But at the same time, with it filtering through and we've been able to take it at a steadier pace and like, you can realise, oh, we need to do that. Or, or we've, you know, like we've had an idea, or we should do that. And then maybe a couple of months down the line, we thought, actually, it would be better if we did it this way. Yeah, it's probably quite a good idea that we kind of, again, quite organically, just as, as things came up that we needed to do, did them. Yeah. As as nice as it would when we were said plenty of times before it'd be great if we could just start from <laughs> down. <Yeah. laughs> Fresh canvas, do everything exactly how we want and all that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I mean we're gonna be eternally grateful to the old owners for, you know, setting us up with something that we can, you know, call our own. This is definitely a labour of love, um, to you know, for, for our own personal needs and for our, you know, customers. Mm -hmm. As long as we keep ticking over, it's fine. <laughs>